What's going on y'all? Welcome back to my channel and in this video we are detailing more puzzle piece by puzzle piece to paint you a full picture of what the future is headed towards and, and the future is here now. It's happening now. I have a whole playlist that I want you guys to check out. It's detailing everything piece by piece since prior to the pandemic. And we're looking here at this article that I found extremely inconsistent with an article that I'm going to show you next. Now it says right here, retail food price inflation rate likely to decrease in 2021. We see this graph where it's clearly on a massive rise and it's just going to shoot right down. This simply cannot make sense because if we look at this, we're headed for, and we basically are, but it's covered, hyperinflation. Right here we see on the economic data website, this is essentially a vertical line that we're seeing and it just keeps getting, especially right here, just keeps getting more and more and more vertical. It is ever on the rise of the dollars that are in circulation. Out of every $100 you have in 2020, $20 of that was printed in 2020. And now we're in 21 and there was a few more stimulus packages that went out from Biden and uh, that's only worse. So of course, on top of that, that food prices will decrease is absolutely absurd because we're not seeing this, are we? Not only that, but we're having not only trouble with, of course, prices, but we're having trouble getting the food to our states and our cities and to feed our families. We're seeing a lot of trouble. I've covered this on quite a few videos on the shipping supply chain. It says right here, bracing for impact supply chain risk management post Suez Canal blockage. I've talked about the Suez Canal blockage that we saw. Of course, every news uh, channel was covering it and playing the narrative they want to play in order to show you that this too, in fact, has to be digitalized and that there are problems within the shipping community. And if we just digitalized and if we just put it on the grid even more, we wouldn't have these uh, technical problems. We're, and we're seeing that here. It says companies that better weathered the storm of the past year were those that had better technology tools in place to help them understand in near real time what was going across their supply chain. So of course they are trying to, and this was all over the World Economic Forum website. I've covered this in a previous video, so we're not going to go too much into detail this time. And we see it over here that Flexport Trans-Pacific deteriorating brace for shipping tsunami, that it is only going to get worse. U.S. importers face even more extreme delays ahead, even more extreme delays ahead as container capacity maxes out. There are people willing to pay top dollar and could not get it loaded. Over here it says, who was ready to pay $15,000 per container and they still could not get it done simply because it's not a matter of price anymore. That's the scary part. It's not a matter of how much money you have. It's a matter that it cannot be done anymore. Price doesn't even matter anymore, it says down in this article, which is a terrifying thing to say. And import volumes are still rising. And we're seeing a lot of, of trouble with the imports in order to also import and export things that I've covered before in the agricultural industry in regards to animals, livestock feed, livestock itself, and fruits, vegetables, imports, exports of that nature that feed us as a country. And we see opposing articles to this article I already showed you where it says, oh no, no, the price inflation is gonna decrease in 21. There is absolutely no way. Every point that you can look at points to the falsify, to this article being completely falsified and incorrect because we see over here, even in mainstream articles, they're not even really hiding it from you anymore. And it says right here, get ready for higher grocery bills for the rest of the year. The latest spike in grocery bills comes on the back of prices that rose during last year's pandemic stockpiling and never went down. Now, of course, they are going to blame it on all the problems from the pandemic, but it's, it's not that. They are building a narrative to basically track everything get rid of the meat industry and the agricultural industry and track everything that you have, use AI technology with everything you have and completely redesign it. Again, it's a whole great reset going on and they want to reconstruct everything. It is a complete deterioration of everything we know now so they can again build back better, which is our president's slogan. What a perfect one for him because it says all the truth right there. Rising global food prices, they're saying that it could definitely lead and will in fact lead to social unrest. 
And we see a lot of that covered over here in this article. Not only did I cover in previous articles that they are burning their chickens, they are incentivizing farmers to stop farming, they are putting higher duties and, and, and restrictions on different importing in different imports and exports. Our greatest soybean exporter, Brazil, is importing soybeans, which is a very uh, terrifying thing to know because if that is the great if that is our largest exporter of soybeans and they're importing soybeans what does that tell you there are massive shortages going on anywhere to the point where they claim they can't feed livestock and we're seeing shortages everywhere there are so many restaurants right now that are complaining about not being able to keep stock of their meat and they're saying that there is a chicken shortage but we're not just seeing a chicken shortage we're seeing a meat shortage a non-plant-based food shortage because again the ceo of impossible foods wants all real meat products to be obsolete and this is an agenda that is backed by our president as well also in the name of our climate change aka climate emergency they changed the name to that as well and this is happening all around where they can't get chickens. And it says right here, Bloomberg reports that the country might be facing a fast food chicken shortage, but we're not just seeing it from chicken. And down here, I love how they mentioned Beyond Meat Chicken Alternative because that's how they want to push you. It says right here, as Bloomberg reports, one of the challenges prompting the shortages is a death is a dearth of employees of food processing plants, which the companies plan to address. It sounds like we'll also be seeing a Beyond Meat Chicken Alternative later this summer. So what are they doing? They're burning and killing and gassing all of the chickens. They are pushing these uh, lab-created, GMO, chemical-infested meat alternatives. And we're seeing so many alternatives for not only meat, but milk, bread, every possible thing, baby food, um, dog food, everything. And we're seeing, oh, we don't have any meat? Well, no problem, because luckily we have a way to lab create food so we can feed the population. Woohoo, we save the day. And that's exactly what they're doing. Create the problem so we can present a solution. It's not just poultry. And here it says that oh, we don't have any food. Well, luckily we have gene modified bread. We have lab created meats. We have upcycled foods. We have genetically modified foods that we can just feed the population with. Let's stuff them full of chemicals and lab created food. And it says right here in Bloomberg, cure for food shortages is gene modified bread, tech CEO says. And we've seen this again all over World Economic Forum's website. Um, I've covered it in various, various videos right here on food processing. Cultured meat is growing in popularity. Whether you call it lab-grown, cultured, or cell-based meat, these alternatives to animal meats are becoming more popular with each passing day. Are they? Or are they just creating you without you realizing and forcing it without you realizing? Again, I, I, sh I have a whole video on how even all our fast food companies are presenting all these plant-based meat alternatives. And people are very happy. They're like, finally, they're getting the idea. They're making our planet better. They're not killing the animals. They're killing the animals in a massacre. This is a massacre going on worldwide. This is like nothing we've seen before. Nestle, when the biggest food company right here, rolls out analog milk. Nestle is jumping in the alternative milk arena, coming out with a product made from yellow peas to be sold in Europe. We no longer want you to have, have animals, have gas, do anything that creates carbon. Because again, in my absolute zero video, I already lay out how by 2050, they want to completely omit anything carbon related. That that completely omits any animal whatsoever. That wipes it clean. Every animal produces carbon. Every single one. That completely wipes out farming. And then they want to blame it over here where it says China food security. Why the nation's food crisis is more of a livestock feed challenge. China is not producing enough feed grains such as soybeans to support its large and growing livestock industry. Meanwhile, they are taking all of ours and the U.S. isn't putting any restrictions on it. So they are wiping us clean. Um, the deficit is driven concern about food security. An issue analysts say is complicated by geopolitics and dependence on foreign biotechnology. I've done many videos on China and as to what they're doing in regards to their food and agricultural industry, including the fact that they have facial recognition on dumpsters because they don't want you to waste food. No, 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 it's not about that. They want to track what you're eating just like they do with the sewer bots that can track what you're eating through your feces. That video is on my Patreon. Feeding chickens is so costly, it's changing global trade flows. 
Feeding the world's chickens, pigs, and cows have gotten so expensive that we just can't do it anymore, is essentially what it's saying. More downsizing for beef likely in 2021. So again, of course, beef is going to be on the rise. Over here, we see Cattle Facts chief executive. I've never seen anything quite like this. We can also see in Australia is running out of cows. This is not something that we're just seeing in the United States. This is a global, this is global, y'all. This is a very big deal. I've covered a lot of this inch by inch on my playlist. Australian beef may slip off global, global menus if cattle producers down under can't half in the herd rebuild. This should alarm everybody. Not only that, but they're also incentivizing farmers to not farm anymore. There's a lot of really deceitful things going on in the farming industry that does not get enough media coverage. Chicken and pork in cold storage lead to lower overall levels of meat and poultry. Biden may make a big mistake. The war on meat is no figment of the right wing imagination. Down here, it says in this article that I highlighted, Camilla Harris was asked if she favored changing dietary guidelines to reduce the consumption of red meat in light of the impact of climate change, because of course that's the scapegoat umbrella term they're using. She said, yes, the balance that we have to strike here, frankly, is about what government can do and should do around creating incentives and then banning certain behaviors, like banning farming and incentives to stop farming. We've been seeing this for over a year now um, from what I've been reporting, although it's been it's been coming to a high peak for a long time. And, and his plan, mind you, erupts into eating just one burger a month. Can you imagine? Could limit you to eat just one burger, a real burger, not a plant-based burger, plant-based, beyond meat, impossible foods, eat, eat as much of that crap as you want could cost $3,500 a year per person in taxes, force you to spend around 55 k on an electric car, and crush American jobs. Again, we're building back better though. But this, this again, this article I'm going to actually label out in a whole separate video, so stay tuned for that because there's a lot in this article that I want to independently cover. So I want to just, I wanted to touch a few of those articles because again, I absolutely disagree with this uh, U.S. Department of Agricultural where it says the inflation rate is likely to decrease when we're seeing a bunch of articles completely contradicting that. And I want you guys to be very aware of what is going on. This this blue line right here is a projection and is completely falsified and just very wrong. It's a forecast and it's very wrong. So wanted to share those articles with you to keep watch and keep paying attention onto what's going on around you. If you guys like this content, please consider supporting me over on Patreon. Share this video and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next upcoming video. Thank you so much for watching.